Welcome to the third in a series of tutorials on clone cloth. I'm Allie and today we'll learn how to create a simple outfit using the casual clone cloth, which is the free template from Real Illusion. We'll be using Photoshop CS3 for this, but I also have Photoshop Elements 5, and all of the same steps can be followed in that program as well, perhaps slightly different, but it should be fairly easy to find all the same commands within that program. So we're going to start by opening up Dylan Clone Cloth. Dylan is basically just the uh, casual template. So we're going to select Upper and we're going to go down to the button Launch and that's going to launch our photo program and it's going to launch the template within our photo program which we assigned inside iClone Preferences in my case it's Photoshop CS3. Now the first thing that I like to do is create two new layers. One of them I'm going to fill with uh, pure black and you have to make sure that uh, it's at zero 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 in the color settings and then on top of that I'm going to fill one with pure white And again, you need to make sure that the settings are at 255, 255, and 255 for it to be pure white for your opacity. So for now, I'm just going to hide those two layers so that I can see my template again. Then I'm going to use the lasso tool. Now I like to use the polygonal lasso tool. And I'm simply going to trace a v-neck but I'm only going to do half of it. And I just use the lines as guides and I stay outside of the bleed lines. It doesn't really matter how far outside of those lines you go but it, you need to stay outside of them. Okay, now that I've drawn that shape, I'm going to select my white layer and I'm going to go Control C, Control V, which is copy and paste. And I'm going to cut that out of the white layer. I'm then going to make a duplicate layer and I'm going to go Edit, Transform, Flip Horizontally. And then I'll just move that layer over so that I have a symmetrical front. I then just go over and highlight the two halves, right click and merge those two layers and I'll just label them front opacity. So now I'm going to cut out the back, basically going to do it the same way. You don't have to do it half at a time, I just find that it just makes things more accurate and your left and right side the same. Once again we'll go to the white layer, make it visible and go Control C for copy and Control V for paste. And then we'll edit, transform and flip horizontally. There are different ways to reach these commands in Photoshop. There may be more efficient ways or keyboard controls, but this is just the way that I tend to do it. So now we need to cut out a sleeve. So again, we just stay outside of the bleed lines. And for now, we'll just follow the guideline that looks like it's about at elbow level. And again, go to the white level, control C, control V. And once again, we'll make a duplicate layer. And we'll flip it horizontally. Then we can just uh, move it over to the other sleeve. Presumably the templates are symmetrical. 
There we have it. I'm going to merge the two sleeves. And I've got the back in two halves still as well, so I'll merge those as well. And I'll rename that back opacity. So now I've cut out my opacity map, I'll make the black visible because you need 100% black and 100% white for opacity maps. And I'll just save that somewhere on my hard drive. I generally save it as a Photoshop layered file first. Just because sometimes Photoshop crashes. And also because once you save it as a Photoshop layered file, every time you go to resave, it goes back to the right place. So now I'm going to save it again as a JPEG. And I'll label it Upper Opacity. And it's saved in the same folder as the layered file. So now I'm back in iClone and I can uh, select the opacity and then the folder icon and I can navigate to the folder where I saved the opacity and apply it to the template and there's my v-neck. So that looks pretty good. Um, normally I would take a cl closer look at it and possibly make some small adjustments but for now we'll just move on. So now we're going to go back into Photoshop and add some textures. So I'm going to select the front and I'll use the magic wand to highlight the front and then I'm going to select the icon down at the bottom where you find patterns and I'm going to select a texture for the front. You can adjust um, the size of the texture. So I've set that at 40% so I'll need to remember that when I'm doing the back. So now I've selected the back layer, highlighted it, I'm going to go back to Patterns, I'm going to select the same texture, I'm going to adjust it to 40% as well. And then I'm going to highlight the sleeves. And this time I'll add a plain pattern just to give some variety. I had preloaded these two patterns earlier. Okay, now just to give uh, a little detail to the sweater, I'm going to select the shape tool. And I'm just going to draw a shape across the bottom of the sweater. And I'll need to move that layer up because I want it to be on top. And then I'll need to change the shape. Um, I'm going to right click that layer. And I'm going to change it to a smart object and then I'm going to rasterize it. That way I can now uh, highlight the shape and add a texture. And I'll add the same plain gray here. Just act as a sort of nice bottom for the sweater. And then I think maybe I'd like to uh, use that same gray kind of to edge the v-neck. So I'm just going to use the last suit tool and I'm going to just draw around the edge. And then once again I'm going to add that same pattern. And then I'll do it again at the back. I'll just draw. I'm doing this very quickly. Normally I would measure it out a little bit better. I might go back and refer to the original template. Okay, so once again I'm going to add the gray pattern. And there I have a nice edging around the neck of the sweater.
So after I'm finished texturing, I usually create a new layer behind all the other layers. And I fill it with a color that's similar to the color of my clothing. In this case, we'll choose gray. Just in case my diffuse map didn't quite cover the whole opacity area, then it'll just fill it in with gray and it'll look normal. All right, I'm all done, so I'm gonna save this now as a JPEG. We're gonna go back into iClone and we're gonna select the diffuse. And we're gonna open that. And there we have our sweater. Now you can go back and forth in Photoshop and fine tune things as I mentioned. Well, that looks pretty good. Okay, you finished the upper. Your next step would be to select lower body and then to launch your photo program and texture the lower following the same steps as we used for texturing the upper. I hope that you found this tutorial helpful and thanks for watching.